Good morning, folks. Today's video is going to be a continuation of uh, yesterday's research update, and I want to start with uh, showing you what happened. This is our test cell number two, uh, and uh, it's now up to uh, 40, 40 cycles, and uh, you can see the last six right here. They're all uh, in the 70s, in between 70 and 80, except for the one which is just short of 70. So, I mean, this cell is, it's, it's either peaked or it's getting ready to jump again. So, there was the last peak, right in here, and then now it's dropped down, so it should go up again. Uh, the other thing, this is the cell that I, that I made yesterday with the, with the cured paper. This one, is behaved uh, totally different. It just stayed right there at the same 50 uh, milliamps. Just pretty much stayed right there and then slowly dropped off as it dried out. And then I put a little bit of water in it, just a few drops, and look what it did. It kind of melted the, all the, the, the glue and stuff that was on there. Because the only difference was this had set in there to cure instead of drying out naturally. But look at that. It still works fine. I don't know. I, I cycled it ten times though, and it never went up. It just stayed right there and slowly dropped off as it dried out. So anyway, uh, we're going to do our uh, make our next our next cell out of it. And I've had the I've had the electrodes in this Tupperware container here, and there they are after after 24 hours in the slow cure. So we're going to be putting this together this morning and uh, and see how see how that does. All right, I'll be back when I'm set up. I'm back, and uh, I built the I built the uh, battery with the electrodes that I uh, cured for 24 hours and uh, and then tested it and uh, it didn't perform uh, that well. I mean, it did start at uh, at uh, 21.2. Amps at uh, 0.951 uh, volts, 21.2 uh, milliamps at 1.95 volts, but then uh, and it dropped over 12 charges. It dropped down to uh, 12.6 uh, milliamps and then climbed back up to 17.1. To so uh, that was going to take uh, a very long time to uh, to max out. So I just uh, discarded that one. And I built another one, which uh, uh, has done much better. And on this one, I built it, and then I uh, I took a hair dryer and, and dried the dried the uh, electrodes out, and then put it together. And uh, bam, it works a whole lot better. The first the first charge was uh, uh, 80, uh, 0.876 and 13.1 milliamps. The second charge it went up to nine. 0.927 and 43.3 milliamps. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna test it again right now for the for the third time and see what we get this time. But that was a huge jump on the very second charge, which we normally would see a, a, a low uh, a lower number. All right, so now we have uh, I'm on the wrong setting now. All right, so now we have uh, 0.882 on our volts. Point, and it's going to switch to 883. All right, so and our amps are three, two, one. Ah, so <laughs> drop down to 14 from 43. So we'll see what happens on the next one. All right, I'll be back when it charges back up. All right, I'm back, and I just discovered that I got a short in this cell. I think it's right here in this corner. I'm so I'm gonna I'm holding down this uh, corner right here so I can measure it. Probably why we only got uh, 14 milliamps last time. All right, so this time we're gonna we're gonna do it at 0.86. 
hopefully we'll get some better ramps out of it if I don't short it out again. Alright, here we go. Three, two, one. No, nope, 13 again. Well, hell. It was a better sell than that. It looks like I'm going to have to redo that one. Alright, I'm back. And I believe Michael wanted to see a diagram of my electric system and uh, how I'm going to incorporate the um, self-charging uh, battery into it. These are my solar panels up here and they're each uh, 20 volts and, and 5 amps uh, a piece or 100 watts. And so I've got 400 watts of uh, charging power and I've got uh, each of them are set up, uh, two of them are in series to give me 40 volts and 5 amps and over here is saying 40 volts and 5 amps so I've got 40 volts and 10 amps total going into my uh, into my batteries there's no voltage regulator or anything I just designed it so that the 40 amps the, the current always flows downhill like water so it's going to 40 amps goes to the 36 uh, volt uh, battery system and I've got uh, 12 batteries and uh, they're set up in series going across this way and they're set up in parallel going this way and so uh, my my panels come in here and on the each side over here for the 36 to charge the 36 volts up and then I take 36 volts off on the other end of the uh, batteries and, uh, and and they come down here to an inverter uh, which is a, a thousand watts continuous and two thousand watt intermittent and um, so uh, that, that feeds and it's a 36 volt um, uh, inverter so uh, so that feeds that and what I'm going to I'm going to put the self charging battery uh, put it right in here and let in come and hook it up to the opposite positive and negatives here so that I've got charging coming in from this direction and I got charging coming in from this direction and uh, I'm going to build it uh, that same thing I'm going to make it 40 volts and it should have around the same amount of amps you know that'll vary with how good I can make the cells but uh, and and I'm probably will take it to actually 44 volts and uh, and I'm going to keep the the uh, this battery in the state of uh, of self charging all the time by because uh, this the batteries here will be draining this one down from 40 so uh, it, it it'll automatically stay in a in a uh, discharging state charging these other batteries up and uh, so if I if I take it to 44 volts it charges back to 90 percent really fast so I'll just run it at uh, so I'll count on running it at 90 percent so then that'll give me 40 volts and I, so I should have a good uh, should have a good charge going into that so it's a very very simple system I like simple things and everything I build and I try to make it as simple as possible because it's it, it ends up being better that way huh? so uh, that's my power system right there and all right this is a picture of the area in my shop uh, greenhouse where I'm going to build uh, my batteries and uh, if I use paper membranes I'll just dip them in those pails right there and uh, then hang them up to dry on on some clips that I have uh, anchored to the uh, to the beam there and if I don't use the papers, I'll just I'll just coat the electrodes all right on the tabletop right there. I bought an, an old paper cutter there at a thrift store in town uh, for a dollar, and it, it works good. And I'm going to use it to uh, cut my paper down and uh, and also cut the uh, graph oil for the electrodes. The black barrels underneath the table there are uh, my passive solar heating for the for the greenhouse. They're uh, metal barrels, I uh, painted them black and they're filled with water and the, the sun heats those barrels up during the day and then at night the, the barrels are radiate the heat out and uh, keep the greenhouse warm. There's another table on the other side of the center post there to the left where the, that's where the battery uh, testing area is and uh, there's two more uh, solar uh, heating uh, barrels under that table too. This is a picture of my uh, roll of graph oil. It's 100 feet long by 3 feet wide, so I've got 300 square feet. And uh, the batteries I'm going to build are uh, 
going to be 8 by 12 so I have enough uh, graph oil to build about 400 cells so that's enough to build 10 40 volt uh, self-charging batteries for my uh, electric system and I'll probably do that uh, eventually as soon as I make sure that the first one I build works good this is a picture of a black chinned hummingbird uh, this little guy is a scout and one of the first ones to show up at my uh, feeders this year and uh, another couple of months there'll be over a hundred of those little black chinned hummingbirds flying around and probably about a dozen uh, rufous hummingbirds too um, the, they really like my place because I have a lot of bright cl colors that uh, attract them and uh, they like the food I give them because I put vitamin C in the uh, sugar water which they really like a lot so uh, I, I have a lot of uh, hummingbirds I took this video here about oh, five or six days after the first hummingbird showed up and there's about 20 here now and uh, more showing up every day uh, dusk and dawn is the best time to uh, watch the birds because they all want to feed at that time and uh, and believe it or not they uh, they all cooperate and they line up in waves around the around the uh, bird feeders and, and take turns feeding. It's, uh, it's simply amazing to watch them. The reason I'm showing you the hummingbirds is because uh, spring is here and it's time for me to change my focus. I grow a lot of my own food and so I've got a garden to plant and I've got grass to mow and leaves to rake so I can feed my compost pile and my mushroom cultures I got a lot of reorganization work to do so I can make room for all my projects and uh, I want to build a uh, solar water distiller this year so I can uh, have distilled water to drink and distilled water for my chemistry experiments I've got an aqu aquaculture pond that I uh, I need to work on. Uh, I am building a destructive distillation system too, which is what the picture is. So um, I, I have really no choice. I have to back off on the on the battery research uh, to some degree. I mean, I'm still going to put out uh, video information on uh, self-charging batteries, but uh, there are a lot of other uh, things that I have to do. I want to talk a little bit about the destructive distillation system before I close because it's a very important piece of technology that needs to be revived and modernized. It was popular about a hundred years ago and it was called town gas back then and they used it for street lights and you know uh, heating water and cooking on and things like that. The advantages of the system are, are pretty incredible. Uh, for one thing you can produce burnable gases like uh, hydrogen and and methane uh, in it and you can also produce liquid fuels like ethanol uh, you can also uh, harvest uh, carbon dioxide out of it and by changing the catalyst you can produce things like uh, formaldehyde uh, not to mention that you can uh, uh, harvest the potassium and sodium hydroxides from the ashes so it's uh, really a total recycling uh, system for uh, any kind of wood waste and that makes it uh, real valuable because we have lots of wood waste and we need burnable gas and a liquid fuel too if you want to run uh, your car or something like that for a backyard chemist really a paradise and I love it because uh, there's so many things that you can do with that system I've been working hard on this battery research all winter trying to get as much done as I could before spring and I'm burning the candle at both ends. Most of the time I don't get my video uploaded for the day until one or two o'clock in the morning and then I go to bed for a few hours and I get back up and I do it again and it's been hard on me physically, mentally, emotionally and even spiritually. Uh, I have to take a, a little break for a few days and get some other work done and then I'll be back. I appreciate you all and I thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.